Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue fleshing out our bedrooms. Uh, we're going to put in some nightstands and I think for this room we'll actually put in a computer desk and a chair uh, and then maybe some lamps to put on this stuff as well. As we get further along, uh, a few more episodes in, we'll, we'll start actually furnishing the house and start sort of making it look a little bit more lived in. But for now, we'll just focus on um, sort of the big, bigger pieces of furniture like the nightstands and the desk. So we can get into that, we'll turn off our roof, and we'll actually turn off shadows as well, as usual, and get into doing the nightstand. And we kind of just want to do something simple for the nightstand, nothing too elaborate, uh, to sort of mimic a lot of the style that we have throughout the rest of the house. So we'll just go in and start sort of eyeballing a dimension uh, for, the, for the box that it can be. We don't want it to be too tall. Maybe sort of bring it up to the height of the bed and see where we are there. It's one foot seven, almost one foot eight. We'll say maybe two feet, uh, actually maybe one foot eight. We don't want it to be too much higher than the surface of the bed. So we'll probably leave it around there and then we can sort of figure out our depth now. So this is obviously too deep. So maybe we'll say a foot deep uh, is enough. Maybe another inch, erase that and then push this in. To there, erase these guides. And we'll say uh, one foot eight across here. Push that in. We'll delete our guides again and we'll triple click this now and group it. We'll call it our nightstand. And maybe we'll pull that in a little bit deeper, say another inch that way. And so now we can duplicate these. I'll just drag it over to the bed frame so that we can uh, sort of pick a uniform distance for it to be from the bed frame. It's close enough, doesn't need to be precise. Say, uh, bring it over two inches from the bed there and then we'll copy it. We'll just tap control and that'll allow us to copy the shape, sort of it toggles it on and off. And then we can just drag it over to here and we'll sort of do the same thing, figure out where it starts to intersect and then drag it out two inches. And so now that this is a component, everything we do to it uh, will start to mirror. So if we just, for example, start to uh, offset it this way you can see that it offsets on the one over here as well. And so now we can get into fleshing out the shape a little bit. I'm sort of picturing this all just being sort of a, a very rough wooden frame. Uh, and we can get into doing the texturing in another episode. But for now, I think what we were doing, just say bring this in an inch uh, to see if an inch is thick enough. Maybe we'll do, um, say 1.75, that's clearly too thick. So maybe 1.3, we'll bring it in. And we'll drag this down, make sure that we uh, hold shift so it stays on the blue axis there. And it doesn't really matter for right now, but when we do get into doing the texturing a little bit later on, we'll want to be able to separate sort of a uh, horizontal grain versus a vertical grain for the wood. So we'll select the surface here and hit P, and then we can tap control again and drag this line down to right here. And that'll basically almost, you know, make it look like there's another piece of wood nailed onto what will effectively be the legs of this nightstand. And then we can get into the shelf, put a kind of a smaller shelf here, maybe four inches. And then another 1.3 inches. And then we'll say, bring it uh, two inches off the floor and another 1.3 inches. And then we can just take some rectangles and draw those in. Now we can push this all the way to the back, push this all the way to the back, and this one all the way to the back. There we go. Delete our guides. And so now we'll pull this out a little bit just so we can look at the back a little bit. We'll say three feet so we know how far we moved it out. Now we can go in and draw in the lines for our shelves. And uh, maybe we'll draw back in for this just to make it a little bit more practical. So again, we'll control push this in say 0.25. Usually the backs on these things aren't that thick. And then we can just drag this line up and uh, push this in a quarter of an inch as well. We can erase this top line and then we can just drag the, uh, the bottom part of that down to cover off this bottom shelf right there. That'll cover off the back. Now with the real nightstand and of course uh, a bunch of the other things that we've worked on throughout this project so far, you're not going to get these precise panel gaps between all these different pieces. But when we do get into the rendering phase a little bit later on, there are some techniques that we can use to make this look a little bit more organic than, than rigid. And so we'll, we'll leave this as is for now and we can get into adjusting those things later on when we get to them. 
And so for now, I think that's done. We'll push that back in three feet. We have these two different nightstands that are basically done. We can color them a little bit, maybe even make them the same as the bed frame. So we can just select these, hit B, uh, and then hit Alt, and we can just paint them. Yeah, that makes it look a bit more like a set than sort of mismatching pieces. And so now we can work on a lamp to put on these as well on each side. And uh, we'll just do sort of a simple lamp as well. Sort of a smaller table lamp, maybe four by four, so say four comma four. And then we can pull this up 0.75. And so now at this stage, we can triple click it group. We'll say nightstand lamp. And maybe even that's a little bit too big. Push it in, say, 0.3, and drag it down, 0.1. And so we'll double click this top piece, drag it up, and we'll use this for the lamp shade a little bit higher up. We'll actually drag it out, make it a little bit larger up top, so we can just sort of get an idea for the, uh, the general lamp that we're going to end up with. And again, we can uh, drag this to the edge, bring it over, say, 3 inches. Maybe that's too far. 0.5 there, and then we can duplicate it again over on this nightstand. Drag it in 2.5 from the edge there. So now we'll delete the top here and the bottom. And what we can do to sort of make this a little bit more uh, realistic is go and sort of put a bead on the top of it. So we'll drag this up to say about there, and then we can drag this out. We'll just see how many. Uh, how many sides we have to our circle. We don't need that many. We'll say eight, uh, maybe 10. Drag it out a 32nd. And then we can sort of just connect our lines here like this. Create our general shape and we'll copy this because we'll need it uh, further down. And so now we can do the follow me tool and just drag this along the top here like that and connect it back on this side. And we can just go in and reverse all of these faces. And in fact, you know what? We're not going to do the follow me thing on the bottom. We'll just uh, do a sort of a copy there, paste it on the table, and do a minus one shift. There we go. Now we can just drag it up to the bottom and match the lines right there. And I guess this face wasn't reversed. Go back up to the top, fix that. And so that will do it for the basic lampshade. And so now we can work on the base. We go back into this uh, and we'll draw actually across through the middle here just so we can figure out where the exact center is. And then we'll grab our circle tool again, bring this back up to say 30 faces, uh, and drag it out maybe 3 sixteenths. Can erase these lines now and just see sort of what that size looks like. I think that's pretty good. So we can drag this up to where we sort of want the um, the light bulb to actually be, maybe about there. And so now we need to get into doing the light bulb. And uh, we did actually do this light bulb a couple episodes back for the downstairs uh, sort of bar counter. Uh, we're not going to use this one again, but we will use uh, sort of some of the colors and examples and uh, maybe some of the dimensions as well for it. Um, so we'll remake that again. And it's simple enough, we just need the base dimensions. I'm just going to draw in a vertical line here. And we'll actually draw in a circle along the bottom. doesn't really matter how big it is, uh, though it does matter how many faces it has. You want it to have a high number of faces, but not too many. Uh, and we can sort of adjust this a little bit later. You'll see why uh, in a little bit. Actually, move this up so it doesn't really clip with the table. So now we can draw our vertical dimension and we'll have to be sort of a smaller light bulb, not sort of the regular uh, A19 bulb. I think it's a bit big for sort of a lamp. So maybe uh, 3.5 inches this way. Uh, I'll have to erase that line and draw it in again, sort of like there. And then sort of the base of this is going to be 0.5 because we're basically at this point just drawing uh, sort of a cutaway, sort of half of the bulb if you were to look at it side on. And if you saw episode 13 where we made this bulb, uh, it'll essentially be the same process. So we'll draw in this, maybe say an inch high, uh, maybe a little bit less than that. We're just going to sort of eyeball this. We're not going to make it any on any base uh, specifics because you're really not going to see the bulb. Um, this is primarily just done so that we have an object to emit light from when we do get into rendering. Um, so we'll draw that in. 
And we'll take this about here, drag this up like that. And so now we'll grab our arc tool, make sure it has about six sides. We don't need any more than that. Drag a line out to about here and make sure it flashes blue. That sort of shows you the, um, the smoothest line between these two sort of shapes. Put that in, erase this line and that line. Can reverse that now as well. And actually what we'll do is bring this out a tiny bit just so that the bulb is sort of separated from what is essentially uh, sort of the base that it will be attached to. About that, it's fine. And so now that we sort of have this base shape, we can just click the circle that we put in here and click follow me tool, and there we go. And that will actually just wrap the shape around itself 360 degrees. Uh, and the reason why it matters how many sides your circle has down here is because effectively, if you have say 200 sides to your circle, you're adding more geometry to your light bulb or your shape, whatever you're wrapping. If we turn on hidden geometry here, you can see how many individual uh, pieces it has. All of these squares represent sort of flat pieces that I could just go in and cut out. If we were to, uh, I guess for example, unwrap that, take a circle tool again, we'll say 100 here, draw this out again, erase that, and we click this and then do it. There you go. Now you can see how many extra sides and pieces that this light bulb has. And when you get into really small uh, geometry here sometimes especially depending on how elaborate the model itself is some of this can get really weird and start overlapping on itself and start creating some shapes that you're not really intending and maybe something like for example down here now where this circle on top isn't actually wrapping properly anymore so we'll undo that click this wrap this back up and now you can see with fewer faces this top piece actually fills itself in correctly and because it has fewer faces, it has less impact on your computer's processing power. And so that's always a good thing. So we'll just group this now. We'll just say light bulb, uh, maybe A15, because it's roughly based on an A15 sort of dimension. We can squat this down a little bit, make it a little bit more circular. And so now that we have that sort of an inch across, what we can do up here on this part of the lamp, we can go in and we can pull out a line, we'll say, Say about there, just far enough, so that once we stick this light bulb on it, we can see, sort of, uh, get, an, uh, get an idea for where the center is and where we can start pulling things up. Yeah, it's pretty close to the center. So maybe 0.1 that way. And so now we'll push this up uh, 0.25. Go back into here, reverse this, pull this up. Now we're just essentially trying to create the socket for this light bulb to go into. Just have the top sticking out a little bit like that. Then we can go back in here and detail this out a little bit. And so now what we want to do is connect sort of this lampshade to the sort of the base in the middle here. So we'll pull this up a tiny bit Then we can pull this down like that, reverse these faces. And then this will sort of be our ring that we connect uh, the base of the support to. Now, of course, with lampshades, there's a couple of different ways that we can uh, connect this. We'll delete this bulb for now. Uh, one way is to connect it to the base. So we can actually just pull these lines up and connect it to this ring. Uh, and other lampshades actually have another sort of piece of metal come out around the bulb. And then it just connects to the top here and sort of sits on a sort of a center screw. But I think for this one, we're actually going to connect it to the bottom. So we can go in here and... Uh, draw in some lines and it might actually be easier if we just draw them across the center here like this and then pull it up a little bit so that we can have something to go on and we'll actually erase this we can pull that down in a little bit and so now we can just sort of grab the center point we'll hit M and then tap alt so that we can sort of pull these triangles and we'll actually Bring it up to a point where it doesn't seem unreasonable to have them sort of intersect. I think where the ring is currently, if we just sort of zoom out here a little bit and then tap uh, uh, shift so that we can keep it on the blue, it does seem like it's a bit of an extreme angle to pull it up that high. If we just hit K, you can see sort of how vertical those lines need to be. So now we'll just bring this down to maybe about here, something like that. And then we can now just go back in and uh, reorganize, erase these faces. We don't need these, we just need the, the lines themselves. Turn off K, 
And now figure out a way to uh, pull this ring down. I guess we can just go in here and pull this down. Pull this one down a little bit further. There we go. Pull that down. And pull that down to there. I guess really the logistics don't matter too much, but uh, having it intersect there is sort of important. So we'll do that. And so now we need to add a little bit of uh, sort of weight to these lines. So we'll actually just take a line in here, fill in a piece of this. It doesn't really matter the specifics. We just need to get a 90 degree angle. So now we can take our protractor, put it on this line, and then just drag it up 90 degrees there. And then we can drag something up from there. So we have something to pull it from. And we just want to get it sort of square onto this. And uh, sometimes it's not always easy to do, but we'll just make sure that we have it sort of black rather than one of the axis colors. We'll say uh, 132 32nd, and then just pull it and see if it uh, stays. Now, obviously it's not on the right axis if it's going that way. So now what we'll do to sort of fix that is find a sort of a vertical piece to lay it on. We'll just inference with the line, get this purple line. And so now we'll just draw a line over this way. We can erase this again. And so now we can fill this shape in. So now we can match it on this line. We'll say maybe 120th. Erase that now. Push that down into the corner. And then pull it all the way up to the line here. Till it intersects. There we go. And so now we can just uh, sort of copy this piece and just go underneath and copy that piece. Double click. We don't want to triple click it because that will actually select the entire lamp. So we'll just double click that, get this piece, and then copy it. And we can bring it out here, paste it out here, hit G. We'll say uh, nightstand lamp support. So now we can erase these lines. And actually we'll erase the uh, support that we just drew in there. So now we can go into the lamp. We'll triple click this piece. Uh, we'll group that as well. We'll say uh, nightstand lamp socket. Now we can take the support that we drew, bring it back into the model. And we'll make sure that it's there, but not sort of intersecting with anything. That's good. We can drag it over to here. Use these uh, sort of red handles. Now we can take both of these, and instead of uh, rotating them again, we can just copy, bring them over on this axis, and then just reverse to a minus one shift. And hold shift again, make sure it stays on the green axis, and then just uh, pull them back and line them up there. There we go. And so there we go. That gives us sort of a basic lamp. Uh, I'll have to put the support back in. We'll go in here, so fill it back in. Then we can drag this up, push pull tool until it connects right there. There we go. All right, and there we go. That will do it for the lamp. And so now we have one on both sides. And I guess we can color it a little bit as well, just to sort of get rid of the. Uh, the reverse sided blue on the inside there. Just triple click everything, go back into materials, click our usual red, make sure we got the inside and the outside. I can edit this and I'll make it just sort of an off white, a little bit of a yellow. I can go into our base. Again, we'll do a red and uh, even the supports this time. And now we can hit explode on that on the ring. And we can paint where the supports connect. And then we'll just uh, modify that. Sort of a darker, sort of a warmer, but uh, I'll make that sort of a metal color, but sort of a warmer metal color. And then back to red again, paint the socket itself. And we'll make that almost a black to get rid of the color in it. There we go. And we're not too concerned with what color the light bulb is right now. Uh, we were going to change it to the color of the Nixie bulb, but because we haven't actually done an interior to it, we don't want to make it translucent. So we'll leave it like that for now, and this will sort of just be for uh, an emission property or something like that to emit light into the room later in the rendering process. And so that's the nightstand done, I think. I think those uh, lampshades look pretty good. Maybe we'll actually make them a little bit taller. We can go in here and uh, we don't need to do a whole lot to do that. We'll just click and drag around the tops of the lampshades and then just drag that up. And then there's not too much to worry about with regards to the supports or anything because those are, of course, connected to the bottom. 
And I think that looks a little bit better. There we go. And so I think now we can get into doing the desk. And we were originally going to put it up against the wall here. But I think it's a bit better if we put it up against the window. Um, just to have something sort of to look out at. And so we can just lay down a rough shape for that and just sort of eyeball. We're not really basing this off anything. I just sort of have an idea of what I'd like to do. I'll drag this out, say 26 inches. About there. And then I'm not really sure how long I want it to be. Maybe we'll just pull this up. Uh, normal desk height. I think we'll say 30 inches for now for the desk height. And then we can adjust that a little bit later depending on sort of the size of the computer chair that we get because we're actually just going to pull that off the warehouse. Uh, and if it's a bit too tall or too narrow, we can just sort of adjust the bottom. And so now we can erase our guides. I'll group this. Call it computer desk. There we go. And obviously we don't want it to have it, uh, we don't want to have it intruding sort of the entry space. So we'll just drag this down. Sort of see how long this is. Say so maybe about 54 inches so we can drag it there. Push it up against the wall a bit better. And pull it down a little bit more so it's a little bit more centered into the window. We don't want to pull it down too far, obviously, to intrude that space. And I think we'll sort of base this off similar dimensions to the nightstands. And uh, those that was 1.3 inches. And so we can just do a shift control tap and bring this down to make it look like the top piece of the desk. Reverse that face, drag this line down. And now what we'll do is pull this down, say, four inches. Let me say 0.5. I was thinking of having this sort of be a keyboard tray area, but I think actually we'll just use the surface itself. And this can just sort of be an underside support. So we'll draw a line there. And then we can push this all the way through to the back. And we'll grab this face and push that in a couple of inches, say three. Maybe two, bring it over 1.3 again. I'll draw those lines in on the back as well so that we can put another support on this side. Bring that in the two inches, erase. And then we'll just push this through actually 1.3, make that a little bit easier and push this up to the top. And we don't want that to erase itself. So we'll draw it back in, reverse that face. And so that sort of does it for a very basic desk, but I think what we'll do is actually sort of put a little printing uh, storage unit on this. And so we can bring this down, say about five inches, drag another line down 1.3, and then drag this over maybe one foot six, draw a line down there, make it look like it's its own piece. Same on the back. And now draw a, a guide in, 1.3 there, and a line across, and then pull this down to the floor like that. And so now we'll fill this face in, so we'll just draw a line across the bottom, and we'll push this in, say 1.5 inches, might need to erase this face, there we go. Reverse that, and then just make sure that it's uh, drawn across the back as well. Actually, uh, because you will see this from outside, we'll actually push this in a little bit. Say 0.5, might need to do the same thing on the front. Uh, and we'll actually just fill this in. And uh, we won't have, be able to have a shelf go all the way to the floor. So we'll say 0.5 and drag that up a tiny bit. Draw a line across there and then bring it in an inch. And so now we'll have three shelves. We'll say a foot. And then we can divide the top two shelves up. That's almost a foot. So if we draw a line across here, the uh, guide will actually find the center point for us. There we go. And if we drag this down an eighth of an inch from the tops of each of these, then that will help center it as well. I'll just draw our rectangle tool in, push that in 0.5. And in fact, we'll do uh, we'll do that on the sides as well. I'm gonna just draw some rectangles in to fill these guides. There we go. And for the handles on these drawers, we'll actually uh, bring this over 2.25, and then make this an inch wide, and then maybe just down from the top of this, we'll say 0.25, and we'll actually exit the component so that what we draw. It uh, doesn't really get connected. Draw this here. 
the face of it, pull this down sort of about here. And then we'll draw a line in like that. And then an arc tool, we'll say maybe 10 sides and sort of angle it down a little bit, which can sort of act as like a little pull tab like that. And there we go. And we can just push this piece across, push that piece across. And obviously we don't want it to be a quarter of an inch thick. So we'll offset this down to about here and then draw this line across that way. And then just to make sure that this uh, connects, we'll draw that there. And we can sort of pull this across and shave that piece off. And then we can pull this down, which will sort of continue that arc. We don't want to pull it down too far, maybe to there. Grab our arc tool again, say an eighth of an inch either side like that and pull the arc across like that on the blue and push these corners off to sort of round that as well. So now we can group this. We'll say uh, computer desk, pull tab, and we'll just cut and sort of paste it into the component. And uh, let's make sure that it's on the top of the line there. And again, we'll go, we'll say uh, 2.25 again. Line it up on this guide on each, uh, on each drawer. And maybe we don't have it stick out that far. Maybe we can just sort of compress it, see where it looks. There we go, that's a bit better. Maybe we'll uh, widen them a little bit as well. Like that. And so that'll do it for the computer desk. And we can sort of push this back over a little bit just because we did make it wider than we had planned. And we'll actually go into this. We will copy the, the bed frame color and we'll sort of paste it onto the model like we have done here. We'll take these three tabs and paint these red. We'll pull it down a little bit, make them sort of almost black. And I kind of think maybe we'll make the the shelves a little bit of a different color. Can sort of offset it with the wood. Uh, but we'll just sort of, of course, paint them red for now. Have to go in and get all the edges. And then we can start modifying it. And we'll sort of want it to be a wood color, but maybe a little bit lighter. So pull that out. Yeah, I think maybe around there is good. So we can leave that and now we can go on to the uh, SketchUp warehouse and start looking for uh, a chair. Actually, before we even do that, maybe we can just go in and color our supports the same as the shelves. I think that would make sense. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, I think this one actually looks pretty good. So sort of the style we're after, but executive, sort of a bit of a simple shape. So we'll download that one. And so now that we have our chair here, the first thing we're actually going to do is sort of untexture it. It does have, it's not an awful texture, but it is sort of a larger, um, it's almost like it's scaled up a little bit. And we can go in and uh, sort of reskin this a little bit later. So we will, yeah, we'll drill down into the, the model and get the colors and uh, we'll paint it red. Get modify that. We'll make it sort of a similar color to what it was. Uh, maybe a little less vibrant and the uh, the wheels and the support are actually not textured either so we can leave those and we'll actually rotate this a little bit and uh, of course the one of the primary things is you want to make sure that the desk um, sort of fits the chair or vice versa um, so maybe we'll scale this down just a tiny bit and maybe raise the desk up so we can pull this out and maybe it's fine the way it is. It doesn't need to be able to fit completely under the desk. And maybe what we can actually do to accommodate that is go in here and uh, pull these in maybe another two inches. Can leave that one where it is on the back. Uh, but by pushing that front one in, it allows the chair to go in a little bit further. And uh, so I guess we can get a computer from the warehouse as well. Maybe just get a little laptop. And so the one that we're going to go ahead and get is this one. And it's actually incredibly detailed. I've already sort of downloaded it and put it in the model. Uh, and as you can see, it actually even has all the little uh, holes for the speakers, which is a bit much, but it's a, it's a great fidelity for the model. So we'll just put it in there. And so there we go. And I think actually we'll go over to the other room and grab one of our lamps and uh, put that on the desk as well. Uh, and maybe as a finishing touch on this lamp, we can actually go in and put another circle. We'll draw a line to the middle, right about there. 
and we can put a circle. We don't need 100 faces, say maybe 30. Drag that out 3 16 uh, and then pull this up like that. And this can be sort of the on switch for the lamp. All right, so I think all that looks pretty good. We got the uh, desk put in place here, and I think there's still enough space uh, to sort of use the room. Um, not too bad. We got the nightstands done over here as well, and I think those look pretty good. So I think that's going to go ahead and wrap things up for this part. Maybe we can get into doing the outside furniture for the deck next time. If you like this video and would like to help support me make more videos like this, you can check out my Patreon. Uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.